Hello and a warm welcome to Fun of Flying. On the 12th of December this year I published this particular video on my channel showing you a very simple way of how to illuminate numerous LEDs through a demultiplexer. The setup concern was completely standalone at the time and not connected to any flight simulator which was fine for all I was trying to do was test out what possibilities there were with the components involved. In today's video however I want to take matters a bit further and design a new setup that this time will be linked directly to X-Plane using the X-Plane Direct plugin that I covered in a previous video. In essence what I'd like to do is find a way of illuminating various LEDs in the physical world as I did before but now they will only be illuminated when something is switched on in the virtual world. Now what I'm referring to here of course is the possibility of putting together an array of external annunciator warning lights and it will be X-Plane itself that determines whether these LED lights are on or off. Now there are 101 different things that you could use annunciator warning lights for in a home cockpit setup and if you just chose 10 of them say then this would immediately result in a lot of LED output wires being connected back to your system's microcontroller. And given that this microcontroller would most likely be an Arduino Leonardo simply because of its native USB capabilities it certainly wouldn't leave you many pin terminals to play with as far as any inputs were concerned. Because of this I initially started writing a sketch code to facilitate the use of a demultiplexer as per my previous video in order to reduce the number of outputs required on the microcontroller. Unfortunately though the external LED annunciator lights didn't quite function as expected which I think was caused by an issue between the sketch code used and the DMUX itself. Anyway I did a bit more research and came up with another idea and that was to use one of my spare Mega 2560 microcontrollers for the annunciator light system and in addition use a native USB capable Leonardo for any inputs required. Of course that would mean using two microcontrollers at the same time but as only the Leonardo would be recognized as a human interface device by Windows 10 and of course X-Plane there wouldn't or shouldn't be any conflicts between the two devices. Okay so moving on with a bit of a recap the plan is to launch X-Plane load an aircraft, a basic Cessna Skyhawk in this case, use my mouse to operate a switch in the cockpit, for example the beacon light switch, and when done I then want X-Plane to send a signal out into the real world that illuminates just one LED light on my prototyping breadboard. So how did I get on? Well I actually managed to illuminate 11 separate LEDs on my prototype board by throwing 11 different switches in the cockpit and I'll show you that now in X-Plane and in our little Cessna. So I'm going to operate one at a time a number of switches in the cockpit with my mouse and as I do so courtesy of the video overlay that you can see you should also start to notice the LED lights on my breadboard illuminating. Now I'm not using any external switches or push buttons to make this work. I haven't set up any keyboard assignments and there is no microcontroller being used as a human interface device. All I'm using is my mouse as I said before and one Mega 2560. And as you'll know by now I'm sure the 2560 microcontroller is simply not capable of sending inbound signals to my PC due to its lack of native USB support. So even this is in no way influencing X-Plane in determining which LEDs are illuminated or when. All of that is being controlled by X-Plane itself but what the Mega 2560 can do is to receive outbound signals from X-Plane courtesy of my in-simulator mouse inputs and once it receives that data it processes it and then starts turning on the LEDs as required. 
Now obviously the 2560 isn't doing this all on its own. It does need some help. And that help is provided in the form of a special Arduino sketch code that I've written in conjunction with the X-Plane Direct plugin that I referred to at the beginning of the video. And I'll come back to that shortly. For now though, I'll quickly show you in the Fritzing application the prototype wiring that I used to connect the LEDs to the 2560 microcontroller, which you'll be pleased to know is relatively straightforward. Right, so here are the main components, not many of them. Uh, we have the Mega 2560 microcontroller here. Um, we have 11 uh, LED lights down here. And we have uh, my representation of a ground distribution board here that I use. And these are 11 uh, 220 ohm resistors. So starting up here, we have our uh, signal output wires going to the LEDs and I put them in pins 26, 28, 30 and so on uh, every two down to 46. Now you could put these uh, signal wires anywhere you like on here it doesn't really matter uh, they, but this is, uh, this is what I've chosen to use for today. So they all come down here to each of the um, anode uh, connections on each of the LEDs and then on the cathode side of each LED it goes back uh, through these uh, 220 ohm resistors back to the ground terminal on the microcontroller to complete the circuit. Don't forget that if you are putting 5 volts down here through each of these LEDs and you didn't have these 220 ohm resistors in place these uh, LEDs would burn out very quickly. So to prevent that make sure that you've got these resistors in place. They can either go on the ground side or they can go on the uh, voltage supply side. It doesn't matter as long as you've got them in there. Okay, so that's really it as far as uh, the wiring is concerned. Um, next thing we should go and have a look at is the uh, Arduino sketch code that will make all of this work. Okay, so a bit of blurb to start with. Um, this sketch code has been tested for the Mega 2560 microcontroller, which is a bit strange because I don't think I've ever used a Mega 2560 in any of my projects so far, or maybe one. Um, but there's nothing to say that this code won't also work with uh, any other Arduino microcontroller, the Leonardo or even the Arduino Uno. Um, the code has only been written and designed for work to work with X-Plane 11 or 12 um, and that's primarily because I'm using uh, the X-Plane Direct plugin uh, which has been designed for those flight simulators um, and in any event you can't really find the data refs in Microsoft 2020 to do anything like this with anyway. Start of the code, the initial setup, we need the uh, Arduino.h library which is included in the IDE software package. We also need the Explain Direct library which can be downloaded from the Curiosity Workshop. Um, if, you, if you need to know more information about this particular plugin then please refer back to my original video that I covered uh, sending radio frequency uh, values to an LCD display. Then we go to define the uh, pin terminal numbers on the Mega 2560 to which our 11 LEDs will be connected and uh, that is pins 26 through to 46 obviously only the even numbers and not the odd numbers but you could use those just as well. Then we uh, create an instance of the plugin so we can make the plugin uh, work in this code. Then we come down to this uh, rather large amount of code down here but if we look at the first two lines I'm creating two uh, long integer data fields in the microcontroller memory to store two things one the value of a certain data ref relating to the master battery in X-Plane in the current loop cycle of this code and then the um, same data ref again uh, the value of it in the previous loop cycle of the code and we do exactly that again for all of the other 11 
uh, data refs that I want to look at in this particular case. So we've got one related to the fuel pump, the beacon lights, landing lights, taxi lights, nav lights, strobe lights, pitot heat and so on, avionics one and two and parking brake. Now just for your information, uh, all of this white text here, you could call these long integers or use descriptors in this case that um, in whatever format you like, you don't have to copy this, um, but it does help if you have uh, the word current for the current loop cycle and previous for the previous loop cycle stated here so you don't get confused. But as far as master battery is concerned, I mean you can use whatever term you want there and the same for all of these. Then we come down to the void setup and uh, these are all the uh, pins uh, that we are using for the LEDs and we're setting those pin terminals which were declared in the previous bit of the code to outputs uh, not inputs we're not expecting to receive inputs in we are sending uh, signals out from the uh, Mega 2560 to each of the uh, LEDs as required don't worry about this bit of code too much it uh, looks a bit complicated but it's a, a requirement to make the X-Plain plugin function properly. Then we come down to this uh, extremely interesting bit of code here uh, and this is where we are registering our interest in specific uh, data refs within X-Plain. This one, for example, is to do with the master battery, the fuel pump, beacon lights, landing lights, and so on. Um, and once we've registered our interest in these particular data refs, we can extract, using the plugin, the actual values of each of these uh, as they are in X-Plane at any given time, depending on the position of the relevant uh, toggle switches in the cockpit. And the values that will come back is either one for on or zero for off and that becomes important when we get down to the void loop section which is where we are now so this first bit is to uh, start the plugin running and this part here relates directly um, to the data refs or looking at the data refs to find out what the values of them are um, so we are asking ourselves the question is the master battery uh, or the status of the master battery data ref uh, on this current loop cycle different or the same as it was in the previous loop cycle? If it was different, then we also ask, is the uh, status of the master battery data ref equal uh, number one or one, which means it's on? Um, and if it is, then write a signal through the Mega 2562 LED one and turn it on by giving it a high value here. If, on the other hand, the uh, master battery data ref value is zero, uh, then obviously the switch in the cockpit is off. So we write, uh, instead of writing a high voltage to the LED one, we write a low voltage and that extinguishes the LED. Then we simply uh, neutralize or equalize uh, both previous and current values to prevent um, uh, unwanted and repeat data going to the LED concerned. Then we do exactly the same again for all of the 11 data ref values um, that we're looking at, uh, taking care to change the um, code descriptors here and also the LED numbers as you go through. So that the only difference between this one here and this one here are these descriptor values and these LED numbers. So you just continue to do that for the remaining uh, 10 having done the first one. Okay, so having gone all through the code, um, I'm going to just go back into the cockpit in x 12 actually this time and uh, into our um, Cessna Skyhawk. Um, these are the um, switches that we're using here and also we've got one set up for the parking brake. So any data ref associated with these controls are the ones that our code is looking for in X-Plane. And you'll see in the video overlay that the green light on the right hand side is already on and that's because it's related to this parking brake here. So when it's on the green light 
uh, is illuminated. As far as the others concerned, we've got our uh, ba master battery light, have our fuel pump, beacon lights, landing lights, taxi lights, nav lights, strobe, pitot heat, avionics bus one, avionics bus two, and there they are, all illuminated. Turn them off again. This is why I hate using the mouse for these things. Much better with external toggle switches. Okay, just test that again. Yes, that's working. Right, so having looked at that, um, just to prove it wasn't a fluke from the last time, um, what we're going to do now to finish this uh, project off is to um, use our um, uh, Leonardo microcontroller with um, uh, full USB native support and we'll connect up 11 toggle switches to that so we can then use um, those external toggle switches to switch on and off their counterpart switches in the virtual cockpit instead of using uh, my mouse as I did before okay so that's what we're going to do now OK, to start with then, we'll have a quick look at the theoretical wiring diagram for all of the toggle switches concerned and the identity of each is listed in this uh, little box here. We have the Leonardo microcontroller this time because of its uh, native USB capabilities. We have a ground return uh, distribution board. This is my little homemade one that I use. We have um, the signal cables go into each of the toggle switches uh, using pin terminals uh, 1 through 11. So they go off onto this side of the toggle switches. Then we have the ground return uh, cables coming back from the toggle switches back through the distribution board and then to the microcontroller to complete the circuit. No um, 220 ohm resistors required here in this case because we are using the integrated um, pull up resistor on the Leonardo itself. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to look at the sketch code for this particular board, uh, which is obviously going to be different from the sketch code that I showed you earlier. So let's go over and do that. Right, so here we are back in the Arduino RDE desktop application again, and a couple of notes. Um, this sketch code has only been tested and will only work with the Arduino Leonardo because of the library type that we're using in the code um, although it will also work with any other mi microcontroller fitted with the AT Mega 32U4 processor fitted such as the Micro Zero, the Due or the MKR model. As seems to be the case uh, for most of my projects uh, this sketch code is obviously working with X-Plane 11 or 12 and although it hasn't been tested, it should also work with Microsoft 2020 and other flight simulators. And I'm only referring to this sketch code and not the one that I showed you earlier. That will not work with anything other than X-Plane. Start of the initial setup, uh, we include the hid-project.h library, which can be obtained from this GitHub repository. We define uh, 11 pins on the Leonardo uh, to which our various toggle switches will be connected here. Then we go down to the void setup section and all of the pin numbers that I've just referred to are declared as being inputs as opposed to outputs in the previous sketch and we are uh, also using the pull up resistor on the board to avoid having to put resistors into our electrical circuit. This little bit of code here initiates the library that we're using. And then we come down to the void loop section finally. Uh, a lot of code here um, but what we're concentrating on in this section highlighted in green is pin terminal number one on the microcontroller and toggle switch number one to which it's connected and we are going to digitally read pin terminal number one on the microcontroller 
to check to see if there's been any signals from toggle switch number one and if we get a high voltage reading from toggle switch number one then we are going to virtually press a button in windows and we're going to call it button number one at the same time we're going to virtually release another button in windows called 17. If however the uh, digital read of toggle switch number one at pin terminal number one comes back with a low voltage then now we are going to release button number one in windows and press button 17 and this alternating between these two buttons here and these two buttons here are going to be responsible via windows and via the assignments given in x-plane um, of, of switching on and off the related toggle switch in the virtual cockpit. Then we come down uh, to the rest of these. You have to do a set of uh, code codes here for each toggle switch, and we've got 11 on the, of them. So there will be all this code written down all the way down here. Um, and the only difference between this code here and the one that I just showed you is that descriptor. Or instead of saying toggle switch number one before it's now number two and the virtual buttons in windows have also had a change of number here 2 and 18 rather than 1 and 17 as it was before and you do the same thing all the way down and then finally once you've done all of that you write this little bit of code gamepad.write and that will pick up all of the um, signals that, it's, that these, this bit of code has obtained and literally write it to Windows so that uh, it will end up as an action in the virtual cockpit inside X-Plane. Now obviously all of that code processing happens extremely quickly like thousands of times a second as I think I've mentioned many times before. Um, so probably the best thing to do now is to go over to Windows Control Panel and have a look at the Leonardo which is now a human interface device and have a look at all of the uh, buttons that we set up to see if they illuminate when I uh, move the switches on my prototype board uh, on and off. Okay so here we are in control panel just go to hardware and sound devices and printers and we should see our Leonardo set up as a hid device here. So we right click that, game controller settings, properties, and voila, we have 11 uh, buttons here all illuminated. And that's with the toggle switches in the off position. Now, as I move each uh, toggle switch to the on position, these lights will go uh, from one in this example to 17 and so on all the way through so let's just do that very quickly the first one second third fourth fifth six seven eight nine ten eleven yes it all works and back off again so unlike push buttons when these lights momentarily illuminate and then off again when you release the push button the lights in this case stay as either one or the other i.e. on or off and they stay like that all the time okay so that all works uh, best thing to do now is to go over to explain and see it working in the cockpit right so here we are in explain in our Cessna Skyhawk um, we've got a good view of all of the uh, toggle switches that we're going to be using today. Um, all these here and plus the parking brake. I'm going to move the mouse right out of the way so uh, you can see that it's not that that's moving anything at all. Put that over there. Um, okay, so I've uh, put a video overlay on the top of this video and you should be able to see the test board with all of the toggle switches and also the uh, prototyping breadboard with all of the LEDs um, located on it. So as I move each of these switches, um, the LED should light up accordingly on the test board and they should also move the virtual switches in the cockpit. Um, so we'll move these one at a time. So we do the battery one first. Yep, fuel pump beacon lights 
landing lights, taxi, nav, strobe, veto heat, avionics bus one, avionics bus two, parking brake. So that all worked, I believe. Turn them off again. Yes, it's all working. And don't forget that the um, the Arduino Leonardo microcontroller on my board is responsible um, for switching the virtual uh, toggle switches on and off in the cockpit. That has no bearing whatsoever on any of the LED lights uh, that illuminate subsequently on the breadboard. The only thing that's controlling the LED lights is the other microcontroller, the Mega2560, and that's getting uh, input directly from X-Plane itself. So now that we know that works, what I'm going to do now is just to quickly show you uh, my prototype test board in, in a little bit more detail, and I'll put the photographs of this on my uh, Google Drive so that you can download them and have a look at them if you wish. Right, so this is uh, the new test board that I've created specifically for this project. Um, I've taken photographs of it from all angles so that you get a better understanding of what the components are that I've used and roughly how they're wired up. Uh, but in a bit more detail, we have our uh, new front fascia panel with 11 on-off toggle switches, which you can see here. We've got the prototype breadboard here with all of the LEDs and accompanying 220 ohm resistors. We have the Arduino Mega 2560 microcontroller, the Leonardo microcontroller, and I've even made up a new ground distribution board to collect all the ground signals from these uh, toggle switches up here. But the important thing to remember is that these two microcontrollers here are, complete, are working completely in isolation from one another. They do not communicate between each other at all. Um, the Mega 2560 is receiving data through the data refs in X-Plane. It processes that information and sends uh, a voltage uh, or not to the LEDs over here. The Leonardo on the other hand is receiving input signals from all of these toggle switches here. It processes that information and sends, uh, sends signals into Windows and X-Plane to turn the virtual toggle switches off in the cockpit. So the, the, the important part as I said is that this controller is not talking to this one at all. They are working completely in isolation uh, from one another. Okay, so that's about it uh, for that. I hope you uh, understood what I was just saying. Um, and if you want these, uh, if you want to get access to these photographs, as I said, I'll put them on my Google Drive, and uh, you just click on the link, and then I'll authorize them to be released to you. Okay, so that's uh, really bringing us towards the end of this particular uh, video. But now that we know the theory uh, works in practice, um, there's no real limit to what you could do in terms of making up uh, fancy annunciator warning light panels for your home cockpit setups. Um, it's just down to your own individual taste and desire to improve what you have. So that just leaves me to uh, thank you very much for watching. And obviously, if you have any questions, then please uh, let me know and I'll try to uh, help you where I can. Um, also, if you found the video of interest, then please don't forget to smash the like button and also consider subscribing so that you don't miss any future content. So lastly, I would just uh, like to wish everybody a, a very happy new year for 2023 and may all your wishes come true. Tata for now.